The elections are less than 24 hours away, and here are my final predictions for the Senate. Let's start with the safe Republican states. They are Idaho, Alaska, North Dakota, South Dakota, Kansas, both Oklahoma elections, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Alabama, South Carolina, Kentucky, and Indiana. And the safe Democratic states are Oregon, California, Hawaii, Colorado, Illinois, Vermont, Connecticut, and Maryland. Let's start in Iowa. Earlier this cycle, Iowa was looking like it might be competitive, but Grassley has really pulled away down the stretch. The latest Des Moines Register poll has Grassley up 12 points. I'm giving Iowa to the GOP. Next, let's talk Washington. The polls are surprisingly close. Tiffany Smiley just put out an internal poll showing her tied with Patty Murray. However, I expect Murray to win, but it won't be an overwhelming victory. In Utah, incumbent Republican Mike Lee faces independent Evan McMullen, who has been endorsed by the state Democratic Party. We don't have a ton of polls, but Lee leads them all, with the exception of a poll sponsored by Put Utah First, a Utah Independent Party super PAC. Mike Lee should win this race pretty easily. In Wisconsin, incumbent Republican Ron Johnson leads Mandela Barnes in all recent polls, but only by about one to six points. However, Johnson should win this race, and I'm giving it to the GOP. In New Hampshire, Republican Don Bolduck has surged late. Two recent polls actually show Bolduck ahead, but Hassan holds a narrow lead in four of the last five polls. While it's going to be more competitive than a lot of people thought even a couple weeks ago, Hassan will likely win this race by a few points. Now, if Bolduck does pull this off, brace yourself. It'll be a harbinger of a red wave where the GOP probably picks up most of the swing states. In North Carolina, Republican Ted Budd has really started to pull away from Democrat Sherry Beasley. He's leading in the past five polls by an average of five points. North Carolina is trending red, and I expect Budd to win this race. Similarly, incumbent Republican Marco Rubio has been pulling away in his race against Democrat Val Demings. He's leading in all the polls, and it's not that close. Rubio should win this race by more than 5%. Let's talk Ohio, and it's the same trend. The Republican candidate is surging towards the end of the race. Vance is leading by five or more in the past five polls. Ohio is another one of those states that's been trending towards the GOP, and I expect Vance to win. In Pennsylvania, Mehmet Oz has been closing the gap as we reach Election Day, perhaps due in part to Fetterman's poor debate performance. I think Fetterman probably peaked too soon as he was over 50% in mid-September. There's also a new issue that could hurt Fetterman. People writing the incorrect date on their mail-in ballots. Tens of thousands of votes could be impacted, and that could be the difference in this race, especially considering Democrats are much more likely to mail in their ballots. Biden won Pennsylvania by less than 100,000 votes in 2020, and Donald Trump won Pennsylvania by less than 50,000 votes in 2016. However, it is possible that Democrat Josh Shapiro could carry Fetterman to victory as he holds a strong lead over Republican governor candidate Doug Mastriano. Pennsylvania is a toss-up in the truest sense of the word, but I'm still giving the edge to John Fetterman. In addition to leading in the polls conducted by the highest quality pollsters, he has better favorables, he's held a fundraising edge throughout the race, and Josh Shapiro as a running mate is certainly preferable to running alongside Doug Mastriano. Let's move to Arizona. Despite the late surge by Masters, Kelly still leads in the polls. He's a popular incumbent with a big fundraising edge, and I'm giving the Democrats Arizona. In Nevada, Republican Adam Laxalt has taken a late lead in the polls. He's led in five of the past six polls, but interestingly, the one poll he didn't lead in was sponsored by Citizens United, a Republican Party group who you may have heard of before. But John Ralston, who more than anyone else is a finger of the pulse in Nevada, thinks Cortez Masto will pull out a victory here, and I'm giving the slight edge to the incumbent Democrats hold Nevada. Now, you may be wondering why I've left New York blank, and that's because I totally missed it earlier in this video. Democrats are definitely going to hold New York. And we'll finish up with Georgia. We have a ton of recent polls, and on aggregate, Herschel Walker leads Raphael Warnock by a very narrow margin. And the truth is, this race probably heads to a toss-up. If neither candidate gets 50% of the vote, a runoff election will be held on December 6th. Who will win that? It's tough to know. A lot can change in four weeks, and we'll probably learn a lot on election night. At the end of the November 8 elections, I believe the Democrats will hold 50 seats while Republicans hold 49. Make sure to bookmark this video so you can come back and mock me if I get some of these races wrong. There are an extremely wide range of outcomes. Either party finishing with 54 seats wouldn't be terribly surprising. And if you've enjoyed this video, I hope you'll subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.